Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad to be with you this morning on such a, an eventful weather kind of day. Um, I was very surprised as I was driving up 72 this morning to see huge flakes coming down on my window. When I left home, they were teeny tiny little things. So it was interesting to see the transition. Um, I am delighted to share a little bit about Safe Harbor this morning with you. I know Central Christian has been uh, a really supportive church for Safe Harbor, and we've been so grateful for the support that you've given to the ministry over the years and the support that you are giving to women who have been traumatized um, and who just need a safe place to recover and heal. Um, today, we're going to be uh, talking about Oaks of Righteousness, and I'd like to share a scripture with you. Um, this is one of my own personal favorite scriptures, and I feel as though it is such an appropriate one when representing a ministry like Safe Harbor. So I'm going to read it right now. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of our God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn, to console the mourners in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for a spirit of despair. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. We could have the next one. So this is Safe Harbor. Uh, this is a picture of the outside. Some of you have actually been there before, and you already know what it looks like. Um, Safe Harbor is, as we say, a place to heal, and we bring hope to a lot of women. Um, and I'm going to give you just a little bit of information about who we are, if we can have the next one. Safe Harbor serves adult women uh, who have experienced significant trauma in their lives. And a result, as a result of that trauma, they have developed addiction issues. Uh, those addiction issues rise because they're in pain. They're in a lot of emotional, psychological pain. And one of the ways they can deal with that pain is to cover it over with addiction. We are a residential home, as you saw the picture. Uh, we serve women anywhere from three to 18 months, so they actually live with us in the home anywhere from three to 18 months. We have 24 seven supervision in this home and support, so if any of them has a need during the day at any point or during the night, if they wake up in the middle of the night having yet another nightmare, there's someone they can wake up in the middle of the night to comfort them and to pray with them. And we are a Christ-centered environment. Now I want to introduce you to someone. This is my friend Abby. I've known Abby for a number of years now. Um, if you look at Abby, what do you see in Abby's face? What do you see on her? She looks dirty. She looks like she might have been picking on her face. That happens a lot with drug addiction. And what you see most is the hollow eyes, the eyes that look dead. Um, Abby came to us. Next slide. 
Um, she grew up with mentally ill parents. These are the reasons she came to Safe Harbor. She was abused and neglected as a child. If you can imagine what it's like to grow up in the home of someone, a parent, who can't be nurturing because they're mentally ill. Her mother was schizophrenic. Her father had some other kind of mental illness that created periods of time where he would have psychosis. So he wasn't even really present. Um, she was trafficked at the age of 14 by a neighborhood woman. Most of us think, if you're like me, before I knew a lot about what sex trafficking was, we have kind of the idea in our head that there's a pimp with a lot of bling on, um, and that's who traffics women. That those are the pimps. And in many cases, they are, but that's not across the board. And in Abby's case, it was a woman that she got to know in her neighborhood who began grooming her in order to traffic her. At the age of 16, she became pregnant, and she had her first child. She was in and out of really destructive relationships. Um, she had been sexually abused as a child. And uh, it, it's such a cruel thing in life that when you're sexually abused as a child, it cre creates more vulnerability in adulthood so that there's a higher likelihood that you will be sexually abused in adulthood as well. As a result of all the pain in her life, she became addicted to drugs. Um, at a fairly early age, she started using, but then became full-on addicted. She used lots and lots of different kinds of drugs until she finally kind of settled into um, the mother of all evils, heroin, and she became hooked on that. Um, it was all she could do uh, to keep living. She would go from one job to the next uh, just to get her next hit of heroin. She uh, was in and out of jail as a result of being hooked on drugs. And as a result of soliciting, uh, she also went to in and out of jail. Um, so this is a common thing with, with women who are trafficked their sex trafficked, and she was not being trafficked by the same woman anymore, but she had many different traffickers in her adult life. Uh, but they oftentimes will go to jail for periods of time where they clean up, and then they come back out, and they're okay for a little bit, and then they go right back into the patterns of addiction and, uh, you know, working for their sex trafficker. She also did time in, in prison because she had been to jail so many times. And at the age of 27, if you can imagine this, at the age of 27, she was sick of life. She was sick, 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 sick of life. She didn't know if she wanted to go on living, but she remembered that child that she had that was living with her mentally ill mother, and she wanted to be there for her daughter. So at the age of 27, she decided, I'm sick of being sick of, I'm being sick, I'm sick of being sick and tired, uh, or sick and tired of being sick, either one. Um, so she decided that she wanted to try something new and different. She applied to Safe Harbor, and we accepted her. So at the age of 27, she started building her life from the ground up. Next slide. So I want to give you a little bit of background about what women in particular, because that's the population I serve, but what women need who are sex trafficking survivors. The same can be said for domestic violence survivors because there are many, many similar patterns between the abuse that goes on in a domestically violent relationship and that of the trafficking relationship. 
the first thing they need is safe, anonymous housing, which we provide for women at Safe Harbor. We don't list our address anywhere on the, on the web. Um, we're very particular about that because we want every woman that comes to us to know that if they have ever said the name Safe Harbor, that no one can find them without them giving the address to that person. We also have a really uh, a good system in place, a PIN system, so that if someone calls asking for them, just happen to find out they were there, um, they can't talk to that person. We won't even acknowledge that person is there unless they have a PIN for that person. And we do that for the same reason, to protect the woman so that no one knows where they are, so that they can have the anonymity of being in a place that's going to protect them. Uh, they also need medical care. If you can imagine living on the streets, um, being beaten routinely, and being sick out of your mind from drugs, you can imagine how broken down your body might get after years of doing this. And that was the case for Abby as well. We had to help her get the medical care that she needed. Um, we also had to help her get some mental health care because her mental health was in really bad shape. If you can imagine what it's like, once again, to be the child of two mentally ill parents, you would need some mental health care yourself. So we got her that as well. And we started her with trauma therapy. Trauma therapy is is just indispensable in what we do. We have our women go once a week to licensed trauma therapists to uh, process the trauma that they've been through in their lives so that they can come out the other side with some healing. We also have them doing intensive outpatient treatment for their addiction issues. So they spend... Um, about 10 hours a week doing intensive outpatient treatment with an organization that we have partnered with for several years now. It's a faith-based um, recovery program that we're really thrilled to be able to offer to our residents. And we also help them get connection to legal services. Abby had some issues. She had some legal issues when she came to us she was, um, uh, she had lots of charges that related to her sex trafficking issues. She was forced into some criminal acts other than just her um, soliciting charges. She was also forced into stealing things um, that she got charged for as well. So one of the things we do is make sure that our residents have access to expungement services, which is a, a beautiful thing. And it's a, one of the amazing things that the state of Ohio does for victims of trafficking. It allows them to have the crimes related to their sex trafficking expunged. We're so grateful for that. Also, sometimes there are legal issues. They might have more warrants out for their arrests, so we have to help them take care of those things as well. Then we give them life skills classes in addition to that. All kinds of things, like a lot of them have never known what it's like to have a budget because they've never had their own income. It's always been given to their trafficker. So that's one of the things as well. Next. We give them job skills training because we want them to learn a job, a legitimate job, something that's going to be satisfying to them, something that's going to be fulfilling to them. So we give them some basic job skills training, and then we try to set them up with someone who can mentor them in the area that they want to go into. Um, they have a coach right at Safe Harbor. Uh, one of our staff members coaches them through the program. 
and they have a coach for the entire time that they meet with weekly. And this coach helps them set personal goals and helps them break it down into bite-sized pieces so that they can eat the big elephant goal. You guys know that story, how to eat an elephant. You eat one bite at a time. That's why I mentioned that. And then we, we also provide spiritual mentoring. If this is something that you're interested in doing, I would just encourage you to think about this. All of our women need to be connected with someone who's going to help them grow in their faith. Some of them come to us not having any church background at all, and many of them find Christ while they are at Safe Harbor. But we like to say we are a faith-based organization. We are not a faith-forced organization. So we provide the invitation for them, and we, we embrace them if they decide to make that decision for Christ, but they can go through our entire program and never profess Christ, and we will still love them just like we did, would otherwise. But we rely on uh, mentors to kind of help, help them um, establish a, a deeper faith as they're going through their journey through Safe Harbor. Uh, we also, they also need, survivors also need healthy models of relationships. Um, this is everything from friendships to romantic relationships. We want them to be able to see examples of that at Safe Harbor. We want them to be able to see examples of those healthy relationships in the mentoring and coaching relationships. We also want them to learn to develop healthy friendships with the other women that are in the house. And so that's one of the things that we emphasize as well. Um, they need therapeutic Christ-centered community. Where else can you find such deep healing? In the addiction community, we talk about addiction in terms of not the opposite being sobriety, but the opposite of addiction is actually connection. And the reason for that is this. Um, addiction isolates. That's one of its inherent qualities, is it isolates people. And what we want to do, what we want to see is for these beautiful people to be joined in community where they know that they can receive support from each other, where they know that they're going to have someone they can always depend on to talk to when they're struggling, that they can have someone that will be there when they're rejoicing and who will rejoice with them. Because let me tell you, this isn't something they've ever had in their lives. If they had, they wouldn't have fallen into the addiction path so easily as they did. Um, as I mentioned before, the knowledge that, that these women are infinitely loved by God is something we try to project at Safe Harbor. Um, that's really critical because they think that they're worthless human beings. Many of them think they deserve everything that they've received. And sometimes they think they deserved what they got in childhood, in their childhood abuse as well. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. So we want them to know that they are infinitely loved by God and that they are unconditionally loved by every single staff member that walks through the door at Safe Harbor. And then we try to provide them with opportunities to discover who they are and why God has put them on planet Earth. This is... Um, I'm going to have you forward to the next si uh, slide, sorry. Um, we love at Safe Harbor to be able to do really uh, creative and just different activities with our residents. And one of the reasons for that is because they oftentimes don't know who they are. 
If you imagine during the most formative years of life where you're, you're forming an identity, which is usually in early adolescence through the end of adolescence, you're forming that identity. If you're experiencing a lot of abuse and a lot of you're worthless, you're meaningless, and if you're also experiencing um, addiction, which is kind of by definition pushing you down and it becomes prominent, if you're experiencing all of these things, then you don't really know who you are. And we like to take our women on adventures so that they can discover a little bit of who they are. Um, this, these pictures, these next slides that I have are pictures of our, our women when they were on a hike towards the end of the summer, early fall in Hocking Hills. And I have them here because one of our residents actually took these photos. And there's another photo I'm gonna show you in a little bit that she also took. She was fascinated with every little thing that she found along the path that they were hiking. And for me, that might not sound like such a big deal to you, but to me, it kind of harkens back to childhood. You know, when you have young child, or young children, sorry, um, and you're taking them on a hike and maybe it's, you know, they're, they're not used to hiking or whatever, and they're just fascinated by every little thing. They might pick up an acorn, they might see a butterfly and point at it, and, you know, they might see a tree with a hollow, hollowed out center hole in it or something. Um, those things might all be fascinating to them. Well, we find that that's the case with our women because they've never been given the opportunity to do something as simple as go on a hike. So we try to do these things to open up their world, to help them see that there's a bigger world outside them. And what that does is help them understand themselves better and it helps them understand who God is better. Um, we also do other things like arts and crafts. Uh, we encourage them all to develop a hobby while they're there. Some of them end up um, having hobbies like um, they decide they really love running or Zumba or sometimes they decide they learn how to crochet and then they won't stop crocheting. And by the time they're done, we have 50 of those headband things that they're trying to get rid of. Um, so yeah, we always try to provide them with a uh, good hobby so that they can learn what sober fun is. I'm gonna have you go to the next slide. So I want to tell you about who Abby is now. This is Abby in 2019. So it wasn't that long ago. It was just a little over two years ago. Um, this is Abby speaking at Safe Harbor's gala. Notice the transformation. I know it's, it's a little bit harder to see because her face isn't as big as her mugshot was. Um, but this is Abby now, and she is confident. She can stand up in front of a group of people and tell her story. Um, there's life in her eyes. She laughs. She sometimes cries. She smiles. She makes funny faces occasionally. But Abby now has become um, the person that she knows God intended her to be from the outset. While Abby was at Safe Harbor, she, she decided to follow Christ. She had never really known who Jesus was before coming to Safe Harbor. And she decided that if Christ did all that for her, 
then she was going to love him and follow him. So she chose that path. And along the way, she also found that God was calling her to a career that would be helping other women just like she was. So Abby started going to school while she was at Safe Harbor. She started doing community college courses at Clark State, and um, she got her associate's degree shortly after graduating from Safe Harbor. She got her associate's degree in social work. And then she went on to Wright State and completed her bachelor's degree a couple of years ago. She's currently doing a master's in social work right now. Abby works with other women who have experienced addiction issues, many of whom have been trafficked. Next slide, please. I don't know if you can see what this is, but this is another one of those pictures that one of our women took on our hike. This is a handful of acorns. One of our women was fascinated by the acorns she saw along the path, and she picked up every single one she saw. It was a really um, beautiful thing. If you remember back to the scripture passage I read, it talked about those who mourn being the becoming the oaks of righteousness. And I think of Abby in those terms, and I think about how Safe Harbor, you know, we didn't produce the acorn. God did that. But that acorn, it needed to be covered with some soil, and we found it. It kind of got thrown to us. So we found it. We picked it up, we put it in the ground, covered it, and tended it. And God produced the oak of righteousness in Abbey. Next slide. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about how you might get involved with Safe Harbor if you're interested in our ministry. Um, you can learn more about how to support women who have been traumatized, whether it be domestic violence, homelessness, sex trafficking, childhood trauma, a lot of loss. Um, there are many traumas that women can face, that anyone can face, and our women in particular. Uh, but you can learn what those are and you, you can become more educated about that. And you can become more educated about how substance abuse affects people's lives as well. You can also pray. We can't do what we do at Safe Harbor without the people of God supporting and praying for the women and the staff members that work with these women. It's an it's sometimes a really onerous job. Um, there are days when I think, I don't know how much longer I can do this. And then there are days when I know that this is where God has called me. And to be anywhere else would not be anywhere near as fulfilling. And we like to say at Safe Harbor that those of us who work there and the volunteers that volunteer there have a front row seat to transformation, and it's true. So um, we appreciate you guys praying for us and uh, allowing us the opportunity to have that front row seat to the transformation that happens. You can also volunteer. Um, there are lots and lots of ways to volunteer at Safe Harbor. We uh, have... Um, Opportunities where you could mentor someone spiritually. You could do some job skill training if you're interested in that. You could teach a class. 
um, something maybe you're passionate about that you think this would be so great for, for Safe Harbor. Our theme for this coming year is all things new. So we want to teach our women, you know, just give them some new skills and, and new things. So if you think you might have a skill that they might want to learn, see me afterwards. Um, there, we, you can also volunteer to transport women. Uh, men can get involved. We have lots of grunt work that needs to be involved. And if you're a maintenance guru, we can always use maintenance people on our uh, volunteer list. And then lastly, you can give. Um, we value um, our givers because uh, we can't do what we do without individuals that donate to the ministry and donate to the cause of women healing and recovering. So we love it when people can commit to becoming sustaining champions for our ministry, but even one-time gifts are so very much appreciated. So we always appreciate that as well. And we have been so grateful for um, Central Christian and the donations that Central Christian has made along the way. Um, now, as the worship uh, team is kind of back in place, I just want to thank you once again for your support. And I just want to close in a prayer that is going to um, just remember those that mourn and how they will have the oil of joy and rejoicing. Father, thank you for blessing us as we sit here in this warm environment, enjoying the gathering together again. Lord, we recognize that we are indeed fortunate and blessed. And for those of us who are mourning today, I pray that you would be the oil of joy for them and rejoicing, that you would turn their mourning into joy. And I pray this same thing for Safe Harbor's residents as they have so much to mourn. And we pray that you would help them to mourn well, but that you would exchange that mourning for joy in due time, that you would plant them and help them to grow into the oaks of righteousness that you desire and that you have intended them to be right from the beginning. Thank you, God, for allowing me to work with these beautiful, beautiful women. And I thank you for this group of people who have supported these uh, women along the way. In the name of Jesus, amen.